Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Welcome, thank you for tuning in. We have a pretty cool uh, situation here where we received a Izel tuner. Uh, it's called the Izel PDT, Particle Dampening Technology. Um, and the tuner, again like most tuners, just screws right onto the front of the barrel. Um, Let's see there, you got some space from the uh, crown to the outer part of the tuner there. There's numbers on the tuner there, so you can easily index uh, what number of the tuner you are on. And I put a little mark there on the barrel to tell me, okay, this is, this is the number that I'm on. So anyway, this tuner, um, again, turn this thing in, and then it's got three... Uh, uh, bolts that you tighten up a little bit there um, <clears throat> Again, um, good thing this tuner came with the directions on how to thread it and also uh, directions on how to actually do the tuning um, So really good stuff good information to have So we went ahead and threaded this tuner on um, turned it in all the way and then turned it out about a half a turn and then I um, uh, tighten these bolts now not super tight like I didn't crank them down as much as I can with my hand force I just turned them until I felt them pretty much sticking in place with a with a pretty light turn so and they and they easily easily stayed in place so um, definitely I think the recommendation is don't don't crank them really hard just just turn them you know just tight enough so that they're snug um, and then I took the standard BR rifle that I use for a lot of my uh, 6 PPC tests, um, 6 PPC cartridge, uh, using uh, Norma 22 PPC brass, necked up to 6 millimeter. That brass is doing really good. <laughs> it's very consistent uh, and, and really, really good brass. Um, so uh, it's been, been working really well in this rifle so far. And it got a new barrel, a new Schillen barrel. This is a 13 and a half twist uh, Schillen stainless barrel. And uh, with the heavy varmint contour. And I think we set it at about 24 inches long. Um, oh yeah, about 23, 22 and a half inches long. So it meets uh, weight requirements for heavy varmint class and competition. And yeah, same Bat Nouveau action and um, March uh, Lou Murtica reticle raised scope. Anyway, so new barrel. So what I did is I, I broke it in. I took some, um, um, I'm a big fan of the Joker bullets. These are the bullets that I used to win Shooter of the Year last year. Uh, PRP bullets in uh, Arizona. Um, I took some some seconds and used those to not only fire form the case but also break in the barrel and um, after that went ahead and started doing load development and uh, using LT32 powder getting really good powder use a good powder good brass and uh, good bullets like the PRP jokers um, PRP makes other great bullets, by the way, not just the Jokers. Uh, the Patriots and the Diablos are also excellent uh, short-range 6mm bullets. But anyway, um, and started load development. And, um, you know, load development looked okay. I mean, it wasn't uh, flawless. I, you know, had some couple flyers here and there. Uh, but I did notice, you know, there was something going on between 27.4 and 27.6. There may have been a, you know, tune window there, but um, I went back and loaded below 26.8, and it didn't do too well, so I kind of was thinking, let's look at 27.4, 27.6, so um, I went ahead and loaded 27.5, right in between what I'm seeing as a potential tune window, and so went ahead and just loaded up several rounds of that, Went to the range and then did what I normally do with tuners, which is to sort of test the tune window on every hash mark. 
So for this particular situation here, the temperature was 43 degrees, 72% relative humidity, barometric pressure was 30.38, which that's a really high barometric pressure for this area. Um, not much wind out there. There was a little bit of, you know, wind here and there, and I, I was able to sort of kind of check it out and um, I made intentionally did not shoot in the wind. Um, went ahead and loaded a bunch of rounds and started with three shot groups with the tuner set at the 22 number. So again, this thing thankfully is numbered really easily. So you can easily see there 26, 28, 30. So I set the first setting was at 22, fired a three shot group and then, um, let the barrel cool. And on a cold day like this, 43 degrees, my temperature indicator on my barrel, um, the bottom setting is 86 degrees. So it doesn't really actually, <laughs> um, you don't get any indication uh, of the, after you shoot these three shot groups in 43 degrees. It takes several, probably 10 shots to even get it up to 86 degrees. So, but what I did is I just put my hand on the barrel and felt it and okay, it felt pretty cold. So let's go on to the next three shot group. And so move the tuner to getting out of the tune window is so, so this making this target, um, you know, you gotta be very meticulous making this target. Um, and that's what I did with this target too, is I made sure I had a, a, a flat ruler and then I used the exact same, um, it's almost like a diamond looking thing at 100 yards. This fits my dot perfectly. My dot like centers right in the middle of that, um, which is why I use this pattern. But anyway, used it again here. Um, and reshot tuner setting. And I went out to 31 because I think, I think, I think we may be seeing something from like 28 to 31. Okay, um, it's possible it could go out to zero and one, but we're getting really wide there. Um, and anyway, reshot 30, 31, 26 to 31, and I think I started at 31, and then I went to 30, 29. Yeah, I went backwards in succession. Um, and 31 shot a little big um, with a little bit of a high point of impact. Uh, 30 shot small. The group was in a one. Again, these are three shot groups. And you can see where on the, the point of impact here now is almost identical to where it was. So if you look at 30 on a line here, it's now identical to where it, the point of impact was on the original target. And same thing with 29. And 29 was a zero, once again. Um, 29 has given me really good, really tight groups. Um, 28, you know, again, pretty small, but one kind of leaked out a little bit. I'm getting a leaker here or there. Um, it's kind of normal, sometimes you get leakers. 27, again, you know, point of impact, very similar. And then 26, the point of impact went up a little bit. Um, as you can see here, it was a little bit higher than 27. Here it is a little bit high, well, a little more higher than 27, but this is kind of where I think the sine wave is, is kind of sloping upwards. So it's, you know, made sense that it's sloping upwards here and it's sloping upwards here. So even though point of impact on 26 was a little bit higher, but the slope is about the same anyway. So, um, Reshooting this makes me think, you know, yeah, I think we're looking at something between 28, 29, and 30. I mean, that seems to be a super flat spot, small groups, and 29 just consistently is hammering. You know, 29 just seems to be doing really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the tuner at 29 and expect that I have, that I'm in the middle of a, an established tune window. And um, what I'll do is much of, you know, like what I did with previous tuner tests is I will sort of see, you know, shoot it in different atmospheric conditions to see where does the tune, you know, fall off. With other tuners that I've tested, um, 
in out here in Washington State, United States, uh, it seems like the, with these tuners, the tune doesn't really fall off much when I have a lot of temperature or humidity swing. Um, I can be shooting in you know 35 degrees and um, six through to through to 65 degrees, and the tune window is still still there. The tune's still on; it's still hammering. Um, humidity, you know, anywhere from 40 to 100 percent, and um, doesn't throw it out of tune. Uh, but what does throw it out of tune is barometric pressure. I've seen that on two tuners already where um, once, well, actually not just on rifles with tuners, I've seen it on rifles without tuners, um, that once barometric pressure, you know, drops below 29.7, uh, the tune just uh, goes away <laughs> and you start getting shotgun pattern groups. And so um, on previous tuners, in that situation, I've turned the tuner to within the tune window, and uh, just one hash, and uh, both of them got back in tune. So um, it seems like um, you know these tuners um, seem to be you know do just fine, helping them maintain the tune throughout you know pretty large temperature and humidity swings, at least out here in Washington, United States, um, but barometric pressure out here once that has a dramatic shift it's over your tune's gone but the tuners then uh you i was able to uh, just turn them one hash uh inward and all of a sudden the tune comes back and it's hammering again so anyway and that's not, that's not just by a little that's by a lot i mean it's it's you know the the groups grow double in size um once the tune falls off but then once i turn it one hash in all of a sudden they shrink back to uh, half the size so um, it's quite phenomenal so we're gonna go ahead and give that a shot here with this rifle too we're gonna take it out this this rifle this tuner combo shoot it a lot see what happens and um, you know see what the data say all right everyone well thanks for tuning in and uh, hope to see you soon we'll have some more videos here coming up pretty soon um, looking at uh, primers again um, I <laughs> Um, thought I was kind of done testing primer stuff and then got a little bit of a renewed interest uh, based on some um, feedback that I got from some of my patrons. Um, and by the way, if you are on Patreon, please join my, or, or if you're not, just please join Patreon if you're not. And if you are, please join my Patreon page. We got a lot, a lot of stuff going on there. Anyway, patrons were asking about certain things about primers, and so um, I opened up another series of tests and have some very interesting data that uh, we'll be posting here on YouTube pretty soon. Uh, anyway, okay. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.